Hello guys and gals, and this is part 34 of our reading of the Harvard Classics. And we'll go over what the Harvard Classics encapsulate. Let's see. The Harvard Classics are composed of the Apology, Phaedo, and Credo of Plato, translated by Benjamin Jowett. We've read that previously. The Golden Sayings of Epictetus, translated by Hastings Crosley, which we've already read that. And the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, translated by George Long. We are reading that currently. This book was edited by Charles W. Eliot, LLD, with introduction, introductions and notes. I'm going to go over the copyright information, which clearly says it's copyright 1980, 1937, and 1907 by Grawlier Inter, um, Enterprises Corporation, and manufactured in the United States. Um, looks like we left off with number 12. So... Let's get right on to that. We're getting near the end of the book, so... Anyways. Let's see here. Okay. Number 12, I believe, is what I said. Uh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> okay, number 12. Here we go. Labor not as one who is wretched, nor yet as one who would be pitied or admired, but directly, but direct thy will to one thing only, to put thy, thyself in motion and to check thyself as the social reason requires. Number 13, today I have got out of all trouble, or rather I have cast out all trouble, for it was not outside, but within and in my opinions. Number 14. All things are the same, familiar in experience and ephemeral in time, and worthless in the, man, in the matter. Everything now is just as it was in the time of those whom we have buried. Number 15. Things stand outside of us, themselves by themselves, neither knowing aught for themselves, nor expressing any judgment. What is it, then, which does, which does judge about them? The, ru the ruling faculty. Number 16. Not in passivity, but in activity, lie the evil and the good of the rational social animal, just as his virtue and his vice lie not in passivity, but in activity. Number 17. For the stone which has been thrown up, it is no evil to come down, nor indeed any good to have been carried up. Number, number 18. Penetrate inwards into men's leading principles, and thou wilt see what judges thou art afraid of, and what kind of judges they are of themselves. Number 19. All things are changing, and thou thyself art in continuous mutation and in a manner of continuous destruction, and the whole universe too. Number 20. It is thy duty to leave another man's wrongful acts there where it is. Number 21. Termination of activity, cessation from movement and opinion, and in a sense their death is no evil. Turn thy thoughts now to the consideration of thy life, thy life as a child, as a youth, thy manhood, thy old age, for in, for in these also every change was a death. Is anything to fear? Turn thy thoughts now to thy life under thy grandfather, then to thy life under thy mother, then to thy life under thy father, and as thou findest many other differences and changes and mutations and terminations, ask thyself, is this anything to fear? In like matter, uh, in like manner, then neither are the termination and cessation and change of, th of thy whole life a thing to be afraid of. Number 22. Hasten to examine thy own ruling faculty and that of the universe and that of thy neighbor. Thy own that thou mayst make it just, and that of the universe, that thou mayst remember of what thou art a part, and that of thy neighbor, that thou mayst know 
whether he has acted ignorantly or with knowledge, and that thou mayst also consider that his ruling faculty is akin to thine. Number 23. As thou, the, as thou thyself art a component part of a social system, so let every act of thine be a component part of social life. Whatever act of thine then has no reference, either immediately or remotely, to a social end that tears asunder thy life and does not allow it to be one, and it is of the nature of a mutiny, just as when in a popular assembly a man acting by himself stands apart from the general agreement. Number 24. Quarrels, the quarrels of little children and their sports and poor spirits carry about dead bodies, such as, such as everything. And so, what is exhibited is in the representation of the mansions of the dead strikes, out, strikes our eyes more clearly. Number 25. Examine into a, the, qua, the quality of the form of an object and detach it altogether from its material part, and then contemplate it. Then determine the time, the longest which a thing of this particular form is naturally made to endure. Number 26. Thou hast endured infinite troubles, though um, through not being contented with the ruling faculty, which it does, oh, when it does the things which it is constituted by nature to do. But enough. But enough of this. Number 27. When another blames thee, or hates thee, or when men say about thee um, anything in injurious, approach their poor souls, penetrate within, and see what kind of men they are. Thou wilt discover that there is no reason to take any trouble that these men may have this or that opinion about thee. However, thou must be well disposed towards them, for by nature they are friends, and the gods, too, aid them in all ways, by dreams, by signs, towards the attainment of those things on which they set a value. Number 28. The periodic movements of the universe are the same, up and down from age to age, and either the universal intelligence puts itself in motion for every separate effect, and if this is so, be thou content with that which is the result of its activity, or it puts itself in motion once and everything else comes by way of sequence in a manner, or indivisible elements yeah, indivisible elements are the origin of all things. In a word, if there is if there is a God, all is well. And if chance rules, do not, do not thou be governed by it. Soon will the earth cover us all. Then the earth too will change, and the things also which result from change will continue to change forever, and these again forever. For if a man reflects on the changes and transformations, which follows, which follow one another, like wave after wave, and their rapidity, he will despise everything which is perishable. Number 29. Yeah. The universal cause is like a winter torrent. It, it carries everything along with it, but, but how worthless are all these poor people who are engaged in matters political, and as they suppose are playing the philosopher. All drivelers. Well then, man, do what nature now requires. Set thyself in motion, if it is in thy power, and do not look about thee to see if any one will observe it, not nor yet expect Plato's Republic. But be content if the smallest thing goes on well, and consider such an event as to be no small matter. For who can change men's opinions? And without a change of opinions, what else is there than the slavery of men who groan while they pretend to obey? Look now and tell me 
of Alexander and Philippus and uh, Demetrius and um, Phalerum. They themselves shall judge whether they discovered what, what the common nature required and trained themselves accordingly. But if they acted like trage tragedy heroes, no one has condemned me to imitate them. Simple, simple and modest is the work of philosophy. Draw me not aside to insolence and pride. Number 30. Look down from above on the countless herds of men and their countless um, solemn, uh, solemn, uh, solemnities. It's like solemn, but solemnities. And the infin infinitely varied voyagings in their Oh, in storms and calms, and the difference, the differences among those who are born, who live together and die, and consider too, the life lived by others in older in olden times, and the life of those who will live after thee, and the life now lived among um, barbarous nations, and how many know not even thy name, and how many will soon forget it, and how they, who perhaps now are praising thee, will very soon blame thee, and that neither a post posthumous name is of any value, nor reputation, nor anything else. Number 31. Let there be freedom from um, perturbation, perturbations with respect to the things which come from the external cause. And let there be justice in the things done by virtue of the internal cause. That is, let there be movement and action terminating in this, in social acts. For this is according to thy nature. Number 32. Thou canst remove out of the way many useless things among those which disturb thee. Let's see, for they lie entirely in thy opinion. And thou wilt then gain of thyself ample space by comprehending the whole universe in thy mind and by contemplating the eternity of time and observing the rapid change of every, ser of every several thing. How short is this time from birth to, death, to dissolution and the illimitable time before birth as well as the equally boundless time after dissolution. Number 33. All that thou seest will quickly persist, perish. Okay. All thou seest will quickly perish. And those who have been spectators of this dissolution will very soon perish too. And he who dies at the extreme extremist old age will be brought into the same condition with him who died prematurely. Number 34. What are these men, oh, what are these men's leading principles? And about what kind of thing are they busy? And for what kind of reasons do they love and honor? Imagine that thou seest that poor soul laid bare when they think that they do harm by their blame or good by their praise. What an idea. Number 35. Loss is nothing else than change, but the universal nature delights in change and in obedience to her. All things are now done well, and from, etern and from eternity have been done in like form and will be such to time without end. What then dost thou say? That all things have been been and all things always will be bad, and that no power has ever been found in so many gods to rectify these things, but the world has been condemned to be bound in never, never ceasing evil. That was a question, I guess. Anyways, number thirty-six: the rottenness of the matter, which the which is the foundation of everything: water, dust, bones, filth. Or against, or again, marble, marble rocks, the cal, um, 
the callosities of the earth and gold and silver and sediments and garments, only bits of hair and purple dye, blood and everything else is of the same kind. And that which is of the nature of breath is also another thing of the same kind, changing from this to that. Okay. Number 37. Are we to number 37? I guess we are. Number 37. Enough of this wretched life and murmuring and apish tricks. Why art thou disturbed? What is there, what is there new in this? What, uh, what unsettles thee? Is it the form of the thing? Look at it. Or is it the matter? Look at it. But besides these things, but besides these, there's nothing toward the gods, then now become a last more simple and better. It is the same whether we examine these things for a hundred years or three. Number 38. If any man has done wrong, the harm is his own. But perhaps he has not done wrong. Number 39. Excuse me. Okay. Change my position real quick. There we go. Number 39. Either all things proceed from one intelligent source and come together as in one body, and the part ought not to find fault with what is done for the benefit of the whole, or there is only atoms and nothing else than mixtures and dispersion. Why then art thou disturbed? Say to the ruling faculty, Art thou dead? Art thou corrupted? Art thou playing the hypocrite? Art thou thou become a beast? Dost thou herd and feed thee the rest? Number four. Uh, um, yeah, number four. Number forty. Here we are. Either the gods have no power, or they have power. If then they have no power, why dost thou pray to them? But if, thy, if, but if they have power, why dost thou not pray for them to give thee the faculty of not fearing any of the things which thou fearest, or of not desiring any of the things which thou desirest, or not being pained at anything, rather than pray that any of these things sh uh, should not happen or, or happen? For certain, if they can cooperate with men, they can cooperate with the, these purposes. But perhaps thou wilt say, the gods have placed them in thy power. Well, then it is not not better to you, not better to use what is in thy power like a free man than to desire in a in a slavish hand, slavish and abject way, what is not in thy power. And who has told thee that the gods did not aid or aid us even in the things which are in our power? Begin then to pray for such things, and thou wilt see one man prays thus. How shall I be able to, to lie with that woman? Um, do thou pray thus? How shall I not desire to lie with her? Another prays thus. How shall I be released from this? And another prays, How shall I not desire to be released? Another thus, How shall I not lose my little son? Thou thus, How shall I not be afraid to lose him? In fine, turn, um, in fine, turn, in fine, okay, wait. in fine, turn thy prayers this way and see what comes. Number 41. Um, Epicurus says, In my sickness, my conversation was not about my bodily suffering, nor, says he, did I talk on, su on such subjects to those who visited me, but I continued to discourse on the nature of things as before, keeping to the main point how the mind, while participating in such movements, as go on in the poor flesh, shall be free from um, perturbation, perturbations, and maintain its proper good. Nor did I, he says, give the physicians an opportunity of putting 
on solemn looks, as if they were doing something great. But my life went on well and happily. Do then the same that he did both in sickness. If thou art sick and in any other circumstances, uh, for never to... Oh, for never to desert philosophy in any event that may befall us, nor to hold trifling talk either with an ignorant man or with one unacquainted with nature, is a principle of all schools of philosophy, but to be intent only on that which thou art now doing and on the instrument by which thou, thou does it. Number 42. When thou art offended with any man's shameless conduct, immediately ask thyself, Is it possible then that shameless men should not be in the world? If it is not possible, do not. Do not then require what is impossible. For this man also is one of those shameless men who must be necessary, be who much who who must of necessity be in the world. Let the same consideration be present to thy mind in the case of the knave and the faithless man, and of every man who does wrong in any way, for at, for at the same time that thou dost remind thyself that it is impossible that such kind of men should not exist, thou wilt become more kindly disposed towards every one individually. It is useful to perceive this to immediately which the occasion oh when the occasion arrives the virtue what virtue nature has given to man is opposed to every wrongful act for she has given to man to man as an antidote against the stupid man mindless a mildness and against any kind of man some some other power and in all cases in a, and in all cases, it is possible for thee to correct by teaching the man who is gone astray. For every man who errs misses his object and is gone astray. Besides, wherein hast thou been injured? For thou wilt find that no, no one among those against whom thou art irritated has done anything by which thy mind could be made worse. But that which is evil to thee and harmful has its foundation only in the mind. And, the, and what harm is done, or what is there strange, or what is there strange? If the man who has not been instructed does the act of an in, as an uninstructed man, consider whether thou should, should not rather blame thyself because thou didst not expect such a man to err in such a way for thou hast hast means given thee by thy reason to support reason to suppose that it would likely it was likely that he would commit this error and yet thou hast forgotten and art amazed that he has erred. But most of all, when thou blamest a man as faithless or ungrateful, turn to thyself, for the fault is manifestly thy own, whether thou didst trust that a man who had such a disposition would keep his promise, or what, or when conferring thy kindness, thou didst not confer it absolutely, nor yet in such a way as to have received from thy very act all the profit. For what more dost thou want when thou hast done a man a service? Art thou not content, and thou hast not, that, that thou hast not, oh, thou hast done something comf uh, conformable to thy nature, and dost thou seek to be paid for it, just as if the eye demanded a recompense for seeing, or the feet for walking. For as these members are formed for a particular purpose, and by working according to their several constitutions obtain what is their own, what is their own. So, also as a man is formed by nature to act acts of benevolence, when he has done 
when he has done anything benevolent or in any way um, conducive to the common interest, he has acted uh, conformably to his constitution, and he gets what is his own. Chapter 10. Well, we're, we're really knocking through these. That's cool. Okay, next we have chapter 10. Wilt thou then, my soul, never be good and simple and one and and one and naked, more manifest than the body which surrounds thee? Wilt thou never enjoy an affectionate and and um, contented disposition? Wilt thou never be full and without a want of any kind, longing for nothing more, nor de desiring anything, either animate or inanimate, for the enjoyment of pleasure, nor yet desiring time wherein thou shalt have longer enjoyment or place or pleasant climate or society of men with whom thou mayst live in harmony. But wilt thou satisfy with thy great condition and pleased with all that is about thee, and wilt thou convince thyself that thou hast everything, and that it comes from the gods, that everything is well for thee, and will be well whatever shall please thee, and whatever they shall give for the uh, conservation of the perfect living being. The good and just and beautiful, which generates and holds together all things, and contains and embraces all things, which are dissolved for the production of other like things. Wilt thou never be such that thou shalt so dwell in community with gods and men, as neither to find fault with them, with them at all, nor to be condemned by them? Number two. Oh, we went way over. Okay, I'll write that down. Um, we are to number two, and we will continue this when we pick this up again. Um, we have been reading from the Harvard Classics. And if you like this this content, then make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know I upload. Also, want to support me in any way. If you want to join the Discord server, all information will be in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.